Hello and welcome to Veterans Remember. I'm Dick Gooding, your host, and Veterans Remember is an opportunity for us to talk with veterans of uh, military service, uh, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and all of the, the various uh, theaters, and then people who didn't have the opportunity to serve in those theaters. And uh, we have conversations with veterans and, and learn a little bit about uh, both their uh, history in town and uh, what caused them to get involved in the service to begin with, and then really to uh, get those experiences. And hopefully our children will have the opportunity to look at these perhaps as research projects and uh, to immor uh, immortalize some of the, uh, the great stories that our Hopkins and veterans uh, have experienced. Today, uh, I have Ray Draw with me, and uh, Ray uh, served in the Na Navy from uh, uh, at just after World War II and through the uh, Korean conflict. And uh, I'd like to first of all welcome Ray. Thank you. Welcome to Veterans Remember. And Thank you. We look forward to, uh, uh, to hearing some of the stories. Uh, initially, Ray, maybe you could tell us where you grew up. I grew up in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, for 17 years, yeah. uh, was born in a little town called uh, Rockwood. There was probably 200 people in that town, and born at home. <laughs> born at home in Rockwood. <laughs> yeah. Now uh, you say you were you were uh, really grew up in Detroit. Detroit, and yeah. uh, uh, so that was during the 40s. 40s, yeah. And uh, uh, you joined the. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, how, what got you into the Navy to begin with? Well, I was on my way down to join the Army. Somehow got in the wrong line and wound up in the Navy. So, <laughs> uh, well, a lot uh, of people might say you got in the right <laughs> line. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, thinking about it, I probably did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh, and where did you, uh, so you, you joined in 1948, so this is after World War II. Two, yeah. And uh, uh, so you were too young, essentially, too young to serve in, to in serve. World War II. So we yeah. went to uh, boot camp. Where'd you go to boot? We went to Great Lakes, Illinois. Mm -hmm. um, what was that like? Uh, it was boot camp. You did what you're told, when you were told, and how. <laughs> and you spent uh, two weeks doing KP. That was a, a regular. Yeah. Yeah. My stepfather was uh, <laughs> uh, worked at Great Lakes and uh, uh, trained during World War II. Oh. Was, uh, just at the end of World War II, so I, I guess you would have missed him. But, yeah, I uh, would have missed him. Uh, now, where did you, uh, so when you finished up uh, uh, boot camp, uh, did you know what you were going to, uh, you know, what your, your uh, responsibility was? All we knew at going? that time, we were going to Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a ship waiting for us. And it, it's a brand new ship called the USS Worcester. And we were going there to commission it. And... Uh, now the USS Worcester, as I understand it, since I had to do a little work uh, research on uh, this, uh, the mayor and his wife of uh, Worcester at the time uh, apparently are the sponsors. Sponsors. Or, they, they uh, Worcester um, donated the officers' uh, uh, cook uh, utensils, oh, the uh, silverware, mm -hmm. and I believe I'm not sure on this. I believe they also uh, bought and paid for the bell, the ship's bell. I'm, oh. I'm, not, I'm not sure on that. Hmm. Um, now what kind of a ship was the uh, Worcester? She was a, a cruiser. And a cruiser uh, is, uh, it's uh, armed with, uh, uh, with big guns. Big guns. Yeah. Six, not, not, not as big as the battleships. Not as big as the battleship, half mm -hmm. that size, eight, eight inch. Mm -hmm. um, but machinists didn't have much to do with the, the firepower. Uh, we had, uh, you were a machinist on the on the ship, and yes. what, what were your responsibilities, Ray? Uh, I was responsible for making fresh water. Making fresh water. <laughs> Why don't you explain a little bit about well, that? You, you didn't uh, collect it in a rain barrel. It looks like uh, uh, you're at sea, mm -hmm. and you got all this water around you, but you don't. You don't have any to drink. 
you have to make it. And you make fresh water out of seawater. Uh, you boil it and boil it and boil it, and you get the, uh, the more you boil, boil it, the less seawater. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so that uh, makes you, just makes you wonder why we don't do a better job of utilizing that technology right. today. Yes, yeah, they yeah. could be doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Was that a continuous operation? Like oh, yeah, day and night. Yeah, day? day and night, sure, because you had to supply uh, drinking water, water to cook with, showers, anything to do with water was what you had to do. Mm -hmm. and, and how uh, big is the crew on that ship, roughly? Oh, my, I forget now. Oh. Two, three hundred? Oh, more than that. More than that. Yeah, more than that, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's now, a big ship. Yeah. Now, after you uh, were commissioned in, uh, uh, down in Philadelphia, uh, where did you go from there? We went to... Uh, Went to sea for a shakedown cruise, what they call the shakedown cruise, see what, to teach the new people and also to see what the ship's going to be able to do. Um, for the most part, are the, are the people on the crew sort of all joining together and that really for the first time they really know each other? Well, uh, naturally they have a, 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 a crew of old sailors, mm -hmm. old salts, they call them, and then they're going to teach us what to do, and uh, yeah. uh, so we followed their instructions, of course. And where did you go on the shakedown cruise? Uh, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Yeah. Boy, today, uh, <laughs> uh, the only thing we hear about Guantanamo Bay is that it's a, a pretty nasty prison for some bad guys. Bad guys, yes. Maybe uh, you can tell us a little the, about what Guantanamo Bay was like then. We. We weren't allowed to go into towns. We we had to stay on the, on the Navy base there. But it was a pretty good sized base. Oh, wasn't it was it? a good sized base, and yeah. we were allowed the liberty there, and uh, not overnight or anything like that. But mm -hmm. uh, there's usually three divisions aboard ship, and there was one division allowed uh, to go in a particular day. Mm -hmm. Then next day be somebody yeah. else. Yeah. Now, after you, after you uh, uh, do your shakedown cruise, uh, did you uh, head overseas, or where, where, did, where did you go from the... Well, we come back to, Bo to uh, Boston to fix anything that went wrong with the ship, mm -hmm. which uh, take care of that. I think we stayed here for maybe three months. I'm not... Now, you told me that Boston turned out to be your home port yes. for this ship. You, yeah, you, yeah, you weren't sure whether it was going to be Philadelphia well, or Boston. Philadelphia or Boston, but I'm kind of glad it, it was Boston. Well, I yeah. guess that's why you're here today, <laughs> yeah, as opposed right. to being in Philadelphia yeah. or somewhere yeah. else. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, At one point, uh, you'd mentioned the, that your ship ran into a bad storm. We hit a bad storm off uh, Carolina. Uh, Cape Hatteras. Mm -hmm. We lost the captain's gig, and we lost the uh, a caterpillar that uh, and the airplane. Uh, and and the quite airplane. a bit of it, wow. we had a. So is this a, a, a full-fledged hu hurricane? Then it must uh, have yeah, been. Yeah, must have been a hurricane. Yeah. We, 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 I, I never went up to, to see <laughs> to see him, but I, because I was in, well, in the engine room then, but uh, must have been bad upstairs. Yeah. Yeah, must have been real. Now bad. you went, uh, uh, you went over to the Mediterranean a, at least once, or maybe even a couple times. Couple of times. Tell us a little bit about uh, some of the experiences and the trips in the Med. The, the trip to the Med was uh, very educational. We stopped in almost every port in the Mediterranean. Goodwill tours. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we did meet uh, in Keynes. I did meet uh, Earl Flynn. He had his. Errol his, Flynn was it at, at Cannes, at Cannes in, in France, his, really? He had his yacht there. <laughs> um, Elizabeth Taylor came aboard, and I happened to be one of the greeters uh, to greet her aboard ship. Um, uh, we line, we line what they call the rails. There's a sail. Right. I don't know if there's a picture of that in there or not, but you line the rail and what they call piping people aboard. 
the bosun made pipes like you. If you right. came aboard, they would pipe you aboard. No, they'd throw me off the other <laughs> side. I mean, I'm an old <laughs> I've army seen guy. That happen. I'm an old <laughs> army guy. They wouldn't want me on board. Yeah, but they, that's what they called it, piping someone. And she came aboard, and uh, Earl Flynn didn't come aboard, but uh, his yacht was anchored just beyond our ship. Yeah, so we could see the comings and goings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you get to Tripoli while you were? Tripoli, uh, they were. You know, that's yeah. uh, right now. That's big in the news yeah, with all the yeah, things can, that are going on there. Um, on the cover, you mm -hmm. can see all the ports that ports we did of, hit. The ports of call. Yeah, and uh, oh. that's one one cruise. And and are, are the pictures in here of, of primarily of the ship and the people, or do you? That's the ship's the crew. I see. And then. Towards the back. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Oh, there's there's some pretty yeah, women. Some, that's in canes, I believe. Oh, uh, wow, those are those are nice assignments. Yes, that's even better than Philadelphia <laughs> yeah. and Boston. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We had some good times. But, uh, what are the other uh, in the Mediterranean? Were there some other uh, other nice ports that? Uh, they were all nice. Really, yeah. uh, we were treated pretty good. Uh, uh, There's a uh, picture of, uh, of of the Worcester, and uh, uh, Ray was kind enough to bring this uh, this photo in, which shows this cruiser that uh, you spent. Uh, did you spend your entire well, uh, almost tour on three there? and a half years? Three and a half years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's quite a ship. I, uh, you know, I read that uh, after. Uh, well, I guess in the late 50s they decommissioned, decommissioned it, and, uh, it and chopped it up for salvage, uh, salvage. in the 70s. Yeah, boy, yeah. that's a that some, was a some memories that makes that makes that book a precious yes, book, Ray. Yeah. Don't want to don't want to no, lose. Don't that. lose it. No. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, there's a picture of all the crew in it. Yeah. Uh, each division, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, while you were in the Mediterranean, it, it, uh, the Korean War broke out. <laughs> Tell us about yeah, that. That yeah, must have been uh, yeah. that must have been an well, interesting experience. Well, I had about maybe three months to go. You know how you three months, thirty days, sure. sixty seconds, and so forth. And the exec came, and he says, "Ray, how long you got?" Well, I told him, and he says. We got to freeze you for another year. We're going to Korea. Freeze you for another year. So you uh, so you re-upped whether you knew it or not. Yeah, we didn't have any choice. Yeah. And we were in the middle of the Atlantic, and we were on our way to Korea then. Of course, the crew didn't know that yeah. until they were told. Of course, uh, we we knew there was war, mm -hmm. but we didn't know it. Now you went to Korea. Uh, which way? Which way were you sailing? Were you going through the Med uh, that way uh, that, around India? And uh, we're going, to, yeah, the, yes. yeah. We're going through the Suez, and uh, that's kind of an experience because uh, you're looking over the sides of the ship and you see camels. You know? See camels. <laughs> so <laughs> you're you're going through a lock and you say. And, and, it's camels walking. <laughs> yeah. yeah of course. Well, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. How long did it take once you got once you knew you were going to Korea? How long did it take I, you to sail I there? I don't don't even, I don't really remember. Yeah. It wasn't too long. Um, Probably had wished I, it was going to be a lot longer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Um, we were probably hitting top speed. Right. I think top speed was 20, 22, 24 knots, maybe more. Um, now, were you part of the, uh, you were part of a larger fleet? When we got there, I think. When, um, you, got, when you got to Korea? We were escorted to Korea, mm -hmm. I think by two destroyers. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm not mistaken, I think there was one ahead of us and one behind us. And they were headed there. Yeah. Now, once you got to to Korea, what was uh, what was your your mission? Or uh, our mission there was to bomb 
uh, wherever we need it. it shooting, shooting, shooting from your big, big from your big guns. Now, which which coast of Korea were you on? Uh, west coast, or I, I would think the west coast. West coast. Yeah, uh, we didn't get much of a chance to see what mm -hmm. where, where we were uh, because we were always on general quarters and. Uh, we didn't, I, and how I, close to land did you did you get in the cruiser? In the cruiser, we were three miles out. Three miles out. And a, a, what they call a destroyer was about a mile out, and a destroyer escort. They were real close. They could fire the rifles, and we were three, and the Missouri was fifteen miles out. Missouri being a battleship. Being the, a big battleship, big mm -hmm. she had sixteen-inch guns. Now. We're talking about 16 inches in diameter. In diameter, yeah. that's big. Yeah, that's a that's a <laughs> that's big a gun. Big gun. Yeah, and, and we were half that, so that's a big gun. And so, were you firing 24 hours a day? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Is that yeah, right? So, so it was continuous. So continuous, and mm -hmm. I believe I think we were the first ship to return to the United States after uh, not after the war, but. Uh, I, I, I don't remember just how long we were there, uh, but we were the first ship to come home. Now the Incheon landing was a pretty famous landing that MacArthur had uh, uh, had devised. Were you firing in support of the Incheon landing? I don't landing? think we were there. Then. No, I don't believe we were there. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, about how long were you off the coast of Korea? I think we were over there for three months, three and three, yeah, a little over three, mm -hmm. three months maybe. And uh, and there weren't any Korean planes bombing you or anything like well, that. Well, they were they were flying over, but uh, they were pretty smart people. Uh, uh, I wouldn't let them down. I mean, I wouldn't. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, but they yeah. they pretty much stayed away from the from the ships, ships. offshore, especially the big ships. Yeah. yeah, I think by then we'd probably gained uh, uh, air superiority pretty much. Pretty much, but the thing we had, they had to watch for would be the uh, 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 mines. Oh, mines! Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember one ship going by. Uh, the USS Bush. Mm -hmm. She hit a mine and blew her bow off. Oh, wow. Uh, that was sad, but uh, she come under her own power. Right. Boy, oh, that was good. That was good. Hmm. That uh, kind of moves you a bit. Yeah. Now, after you left Korea, uh, where did your ship sail to? We come to Boston. Came back to Boston? Yeah. And, I, we hit New York for a few days. We weren't there very long, and then we came to Boston. But it was good to see the Statue of Liberty. And uh, uh, of course, we were uh, maybe a week. I don't. I don't really remember. It wasn't very long, and then we, we came back to Boston. Now, uh, shortly after that, you you uh, you left the Navy. Uh, yeah, it wasn't too long after that. Yeah, cause I now you had, have an interesting story about uh, well, your last handful yeah. of days, or uh, what you thought were your last handful uh, of days. We, Maybe you can share that with us. We were, of course, docked in Boston, and I had uh, a Friday and a Saturday liberty. And uh, we were going to leave on Monday on a cruise to Guantanamo Bay. And so I said, well, I had Friday and Saturday. I'm going to take Sunday. What can they do to me? I'm, I'm uh, going to leave Monday. And I came back Sunday afternoon, and they said to me, I won't say what he said to me, what the officer at deck said, but he said, you were discharged yesterday. I didn't, you know. Nobody told me we were going to be discharged. That must have been a big secret. So he says, you don't even have a bed aboard ship, a billet. So I had to go to you know, what they call the EMA shack and get some clothes and uh, get a billet. Uh, that's where you sleep. So 
so I did add it. Then I had to go to executive mass, and he told me this. So you were in hot water. I was really time. hot water because I had gone over the hill, which uh, I had never done. <laughs> and matter of fact, I was a pretty good guy <laughs> as far as that goes. But anyway, I had to go to exec's mass. He says, I'm not even going to fool around with you. You're going to captain's mass. And the uh, captain says, I, I don't understand you. He says, you got a good record all the way through. Uh, what made you go over the hill? I said, well, uh, it's that Friday, Saturday. We're leaving Monday. What can you do to me? I'm going to go to sea for another. So he says, are you going to ship over? I'll make sure you get a second or a first class if you want to ship over. Uh, I was third class then. So, uh, he said, that's what I'll do. Uh, if you don't chip over, I'm going to bust you down to seaman, uh, fireman. And uh, I said, no, I'm not chipping over. So he said, that's all right. By the time you get your discharge papers, you'll be discharged as a petty officer. Anyway, so. There I was. I had to spend an extra three, so almost four months, which turned out pretty good. So you, so you went down to Guantanamo <laughs> Bay, Bay and, and all, your, again. all your friends had all been discharged yeah, all and they were all gone. All gone. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he got his, uh, his way anyway. I have to teach the new, new kids coming aboard. Yeah. Made you feel pretty good to teach somebody else. Ray, how did you get to Hopkinton? Well, Three of us stayed in Boston for a while after we got discharged, and one of my buddies met, it, met a girl, of course. And so the three of us came to Framingham and rented an apartment, and that's how we got you know. As a matter of fact, all three of us married Framingham people. <laughs> oh, isn't that something? Uh, and, and you've, uh, you had, you Spent time in Hopkins, and, Hopkin, and, 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 and you've been home. here now since what, 1980? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, we're certainly glad that you chose uh, well, chose Hopkins to nice, uh, raise nice, your family. It's all a nice town. Hopkins was always nice. The people here are fantastic. Well, boy, and, that's and that's they uh, are, fascinating. Absolutely, yeah. great people. Uh, well, Ray, uh, uh, we want to thank you very much for sharing you. uh, sharing your stories with us. Uh, uh, it's fascinating to hear, <laughs> and uh, sounds like you spent uh, spent four good years on uh, on the USS Worcester. Yeah, and, uh, uh -huh. you know, it, uh, uh, just fascinating things. Uh, I'd do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you very much you. for joining us today. And uh, on Veterans Remember, uh, with us today has been Ray Draw, who uh, uh, served in the, in the Navy from 1948 to 1952, and uh, served on the USS Worcester, uh, which was sponsored by Mayor Sullivan and his wife from uh, the city of Worcester, and uh, uh, commissioned, or commissioned and homed in uh, in Boston, so that brought Ray from Detroit to Boston, and we yeah. thank you very much for coming, <laughs> and uh, we hope that uh, you'll tune in to Veterans Remember on uh, HCAM, and uh, we thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you. Nope. Tune in to HCAM News for complete and up-to-date coverage of Hopkinton. Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 6 p.m. for our latest newscast from the HCAM studios. From high school sports and governmental coverage to community affairs and culture, if it's Hopkinton, HCAM News keeps you informed. Between newscasts, visit our website at hcam.tv for late-breaking news and expanded coverage of our top stories. Tune in to Comcast Channel 8 or Verizon Channel 30. 
I'm Dr. Barbara Herbert. And I'm Dr. Daniel Alford. Prescription drug abuse is a serious problem throughout the United States. The National Institutes of Health estimates that 20% of Americans have used prescription drugs for non-medical reasons. Prescriptions such as painkillers, sedatives, and steroids are among the most commonly abused drugs behind marijuana and ahead of such illicit drugs as cocaine and heroin. The elderly are vulnerable because they take so many prescriptions, and abuse by young people is reaching alarming proportions. Nearly 2 million 12 to 17-year-olds are abusing these drugs. Most people take prescription drugs responsibly. These provide effective therapies for serious conditions, but when used incorrectly, these drugs can become addictive. If you're taking prescription medications or care for someone who does, talk with your physician or pharmacist and make sure you understand how to use them properly. And be sure to keep them stored in a safe place and dispose of them properly when no longer needed. For more information, visit SAMHSA.gov. I'm Officer Darvin Anderson of the Brockton Police Department. This is my canine partner, Gomo. Protecting my partner is a priority for our survival. Canines are trained to give up their lives for their human partners. In the last three years, 24 police dogs in the United States have been shot and killed in the line of duty. A bullet and stab protective vest could save their lives. Departmental budgets often do not cover the cost for our canine partners. In August 2010, K9 Kilo from Florida suffered three gunshot wounds, one to his chest. His bulletproof vest saved his life. And miraculously, Kilo was back to work in only two weeks after the shooting. There are many law enforcement canines in Massachusetts who are at risk every day without protection. With your assistance, we can provide best for our partners. Vested Interest in Canines is a nonprofit organization that provides bulletproof vests for canines in Massachusetts. Your generosity could help keep the canines safe. Thank you. I'm Dr. Kathy Phillips. And I'm Dr. Andrew Blum. Epilepsy is the third most common neurological disorder in the United States after Alzheimer's disease and stroke. It affects more than 3 million people, with 200,000 new cases diagnosed each year. The condition is caused by a temporary disturbance in brain function, resulting in various kinds of seizures. These seizures can produce involuntary movements, changes in awareness, altered behavior, or loss of consciousness. Epilepsy is a major chronic medical condition and can affect a person's quality of life similar to arthritis, heart disease, diabetes, or cancer. It can limit activity and cause pain, anxiety, or depression. It can also be life-threatening. Because epilepsy can also present non-medical challenges such as discrimination and social stigma, we urge you to learn more about this condition. To find out more about this disorder, including its symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment, visit epilepsyfoundation.org.